Well, hello, howdy, and hi. Shabbat shalom to all the brethren out there, the goy and the ger, and those that are looking and searching and seeking the Heavenly Father through His Word. Today, I want to take a look at the word Torah, and let's take a look at a deeper understanding and meaning of the word Torah. So, one thing I, I've reiterated many times in past videos is that it is impossible to understand Scripture in English. And now I'm not saying you can't get a general idea. Think of it this way. Think of it as you have solar screens on the outside of your house. And in the daytime, when you look inside your house, if you don't have very many lights on, you kind of get a vague outline of what's going on inside. You don't get a clear picture. Now you can see a little bit inside and you can understand a little bit of where, where the furniture is or if people are moving around, but you don't get the full picture. That's the same way when you're reading uh, the Torah or all of scripture in English is that you don't get a full picture. You don't get a full understanding of what it's really saying because there's no language like the Hebrew language or the Hebrew language. There's no language like it. Every part of the word in Hebrew has a meaning. Every root of that word has a meaning. Every variation of that word has a meaning and they're all tied together. Every letter and the, and the order in which they were put in has a meaning. So, there is meaning of compounded upon meaning upon meaning upon meaning, which we just don't find in the English. And because of that, we have rendered ourselves uh, a little bit useless in understanding scripture because we've often referred to the Strong's Concordance as a definition of a word, but it's just not. It's simply a concordance. And again, James Strong a Methodist preacher, didn't speak Hebrew, didn't know Hebrew, didn't grow up around Hebrew people. He was absolutely back translating a bad translation of the KJB. Actually, the Westminster Confession, because that one came long after uh, King Aimees or James had died. So today, let's go take a little bit of a deeper look, a little peek inside of what the word Torah means. And again, please always search this out for yourself. Don't follow any man. Follow the scripture. You have leaders amongst you. That's great. And let them lead you into all truth, which is the Torah. Psalm 119, 146. Let it be a light to your path. Let it be that lamp stand to your feet. Let you let it light and guide your way. And again, guys, please... Like these videos, subscribe, and share, but mostly share. Share every single word of the Torah, every single bit of the Aleph Tal, the Messiah, with everyone, everywhere you go. Our hope is in Him. It's not in anything else. It's in Him. Through Him and by Him, we are reunited, connected to the Father, and by that, we find our deliverance unto eternal life. All right, so let's go take a look right away. And I'm going to hide. Okay. So, Torah, the first five books, the meaning or is instructions, dove, yes, dove, universal and eternal. It also means directions. It doesn't just mean instructions. So it does mean directions as well, and is often said to be law, but we'll get into that. From the verb yara, to bring about of a unified effect by means, that means to make us ahad in Hebrew, by means of many little arrows as in aiming for a target. And from the noun tor is dove, or from the verb tur to explore or survey. All of which, all of these variations of this are absolutely integral to the understanding of the word. The verb yara describes the bringing about of a unified effect by means of many little impulses. Now, that's arrows, 
stones, words, instructions, raindrops, and so on. The uh, yore refers to the rain that falls during the first period of the agricultural year when seedlings bud but do not bear fruit yet. The noun mora may either refer also to the early rain or it means teacher, who is a person who teaches children who can't think for themselves yet. The noun Torah refers to any set of instructions, hence the familiar word Torah. The verb Yara describes the same process, but rather from the perspective of receiving soil. In other words, the seeds being planted, the word is being planted into fertile soil to revere or to pay heed to, and in extreme cases, to fear, and we are to fear Elohim. Nouns, uh, the Yara and Mora and Mora, cover the broad spectrum between reverence and fear, between anything awe-inspiring and anything terrifying. The verb, Tur, means to explore, explore or survey and associates with broad, circular, sweeping motion. Tor appears to describe a circular braid of hair, a noun, Yatur, means to uh, searching for a range and Tor, again, also can mean dove or turtle dove. Note, uh, likewise, the Greek word for dove, namely uh, peristera, appears to derive from the pre prefix peri, meaning around or about. This suggests that the ancients, the dove, stood for a symbol for abundance and being all around and everywhere, which explains the symbolism of the rock Hakodesh. The verb ta'ar means to outline or trace, uh, to shape or form, and that's exactly what the word does. It transforms us, be transformed by the hearing and the hearing of the word. That's how we transform our minds, and that's how we trace the imprint of the image of Yahuwah through Yahusha HaMashiach, through his word. The name in Torah, in scripture, the name Torah, in general word Torah, usually translated with either law or teaching, and that would work on a proviso, but what is taught is actually true, a reflection or adaptation of the natural order. And it should be noted that the agreement or the oath precedes a formal order or an agreement in uh, Genesis or Bereshit 6.18, the deposition of a formal order in Shemoth 20, but note man's natural knowledge of order. Uh, when you go to Genesis 26 and 5 and Romain 2 and 15, meaning it's the relationship of Elohim and mankind is not brought about by wisdom. Elohim is not discovered or found by looking for him, and that's in Lucas 17 20. Um, but that wisdom is brought about by the relationship of Elohim and mankind, which is found because he looked for us. Hallelujah. And that's in First John in 4.19. And quite tellingly, the first time you see the word Torah, it's used in a statement. The same Torah applies to the native, the Yesharalim, as to the stranger or the ger who stays in Yisrael, Shemoth 12.49. The second time the word appears is in Shemoth. And it's 24 and 12 where uh, Yahuwah instructs Moshe to approach him on the mountain in order to receive the famous sapphire stones. It's what we call tablets. The, uh, that Yahuwah had prepared for him in Shemoth 24 and 12. Even though the existence of Torah also resulted in rules and regulations that the people need to learn and commit to heart and carefully observe, Torah itself was regarded as something delectable in Psalm 19 and 10 and desirable in Psalm 19. 119 92 and lovable also psalm 119 and 97 to anyone who's not familiar with these things seeing a dove descend on someone uh is cute at best i mean in our natural world but for someone who sees the connection a linguistic connection between the torah and a dove this is quite a bit more profound to understand what that's truly saying uh yusha summed up the torah by stating what the larger and unified objective of all of Elohim's instructions are that you shall love Yahuwah, your Elohim, with all your heart and with all your nefesh or being and with all your mind, and you shall love your fellow, yours might say neighbor, but it is actually fellow, your brethren, as yourself in Matthew 22, 37 through 39. Now, the Hebrew word Torah in Strong's uh, H8451 is usually translated in the English word law, 
because translation there is uh, a great misunderstanding of what Torah truly is. Torah is not law per se. When we use the word law, we assume a certain meaning and a concept of the word that is not present in the Hebrew scripture. Again, this is why we have to get out of our Western mindset and start trying to think more like where they were at that time in their thought processes, which it's kind of hard to do. But let us start by looking at the etymology of the Hebrew word Torah so that we may better understand its true definition. The word Torah comes from the Hebrew root yara, which we already just discussed, a verb which means to flow or throw something. Now this can be uh, a flowing of an arrow from an archer's bow or the flowing of a finger to point out a direction. Uh, nouns are derived from the verb by making one or two changes to the verb root. For instance, when the letter yud is replaced by uh, the nun, the letter wa, and the letter mem is added in front of the word or the noun, then Torah becomes mora. And it forms and means one who does the flowing or teacher. So the Torah is the teaching and the Mora is the teacher. This can be the archer who flows an arrow or a teacher who flows his finger to point out the way the student is going to walk in life. Another noun is formed in the same way when except that the letter Ta is placed in front of the word instead of the letter Mem, we have Torah. So, and... Excuse me, guys. And this is flowed by the mora. And this can be the arrow from the archer, the teachings and instructions from the teacher. The Hebraic definition Torah is set by the instruction from a father to his children. Violation of these instructions are disciplined in order to foster obedience and train the child. Uh, listen, my son, to your father's instructions and do not forsake your mother's teaching. Torah. That's in Proverbs or Mishle. 1 and 8, and that's in the NIV. We don't use it, but that, I felt that that was a pretty good uh, reference there because don't forsake your father or your mother's teaching. My son, do not forget my teaching, Torah in Hebrew, but keep my commands in your heart. And that's in Proverbs 3 and 1. The purpose of the parent's Torah or teaching is to teach and bring the children to maturity. And if the Torah is violated out of disrespect or defiance and disobedience, the child is punished. If the child desires to follow the instructions out of loving obedience but falls short of the expectations, the child is commended for the effort but is also counseled on how to perform the instructions better the next time. And here we have a verse in Psalms or Tahlim 94.12 and Jubilant. Yours might say that blessed word, but that's not what it says. It is ashur, which means exceedingly filled with happiness or joy. Jubilant is the man you discipline. Yahuwah, the man you teach from your Torah, from your instructions, from your directions. Now we're going to go into the deeper meaning of the letters of Torah. So you can see a much deeper understanding of that word itself. And remember, Every part of a word means something. Every letter means something. And even its general understood meaning all plays a part in what it's trying to tell you. This is just a interpretation of that by looking at what it says. There, are, It goes much deeper, and we can go on and on and on with this. And I'll, I'll get to that in another part, some of the other things that are in Scripture that point to this. Now, ta. In Hebrew, it's the 22nd letter of the Hebrew alphabet. as the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet, meaning mark or sign. An omen or seal is a symbol of truth and perfection and completion. It represents the restoration or the tikkun of all of existence, and it's returned to the essence of purpose of one's life. It represents completion before beginning again with the original ahad unification of the aleph. The ta shows us that the end was set up from the beginning, as Ta is the final letter of Barashith in the beginning, the first word of the Torah. It is the idea that the Creator set in motion all of existence in order to reach a final state of perfection, the fulfillment of all creation. It is also the completion of truth, the Amet. However, as soon as Ta is reached, we begin immediately by going back to the Aleph, to the one source of everything. The end is never really the end, but the beginning of something new. Hallelujah. 
The Ua or Wa is a six letter in the Hebrew alphabet and is the power to unite everything that is separated in creation. Literally, it is it means a hook or a peg. And the Hebrew letter is a vertical line. It represents the Kab, a line, which that word is line upon line, precept on precept. Well, that lot word is Kab, which means line or a measuring line. It doesn't it means something that ties something together or something that uh, dictates um, borders. The vertical line extension of the creator's perfection in the create, created world in order to consistently direct it, guiding the cycle of existence step by step until eventually the perfection of the creator which underlines all creation is revealed. The ua or the wa is related to the or, that's the light, yashar, the direct light of the creator, the Mashiach, entering the world. As the connector, the wa contains the power to connect the shama'in or heaven and the aretz, the earth. It can be considered like a hose or a tube, which connects and bestows all the energy of the shafa, the abundance from above down to its created beings. It ties us to the father, and that's exactly what it did. By that nail or that peg that our Messiah, the Messiah, I should say, was um, staked to that post for, that then by him and through him, we are connected. We are tied to the creator in him. It's the only way. And it represents the ladder of Jacob, Jacob in, your, in some of yours. And it's rooted in the Eretz or the earth with its head in the Shama'in or heavens. It is the extension of the essential dot or the Yod, which all of creation comes forth from. Rish, meaning uh, is the 20th letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Now, mind you, the, the what letter it is also has meaning. We're not going to get into that now. The Reish uh, letter means head or leader um, and beginning. is a symbol of choosing between greatness and degradation. It is the word for poor, like Rash, but when it's filled with the power of the Aleph Reish, the head or the first, expressing the firstness, the fullness, and the eternity of the creator and the qualities of being a leader or being first. And he, which is the fifth letter of the Hebrew alphabet, may represent spiritual revelation or to behold in awe the breath of the creator. Psalm 33 and 6 says, By the word of Yahuwah, the, the Shama'in were made, and by the breath of his mouth all the hosts of the heavens. The word, the world has created with the utterance of the hay. It represents the gift of life and creates the verb of being haya or being and is the highest power. The spiritual life that comes through the first four letters, it represents the life essence in all creation. It symbolizes the effortlessness of the world and its symbol of power and Kodesh gentility with specificity. It contains with the freedom of choice. Hay is one of the letters of the set apart name, giving it a special significance in the alphabet, or al alphabet as we call it. Now, Torah, here we will get into the letters in themselves, is the instructions of teachings, the direction, the light, and the truth. And we can go later into those. Uh, if you go back into some of my, what is, who is the Torah uh, teachings, and about the Mashiach, you'll find that all of that is true. The Ta, okay, so the Ta we saw was the mark or the sign, the seal of perfection of what was created from the first. The Wa or the Ua is the peg or the nail, the connection to the light, the Or, Mashiach of our creator. The Resh is the head or the leader, the first fullness of the creator. And the He is to behold in awe the creation of Yah. So Torah, in essence, one meaning is to stand in awe and behold the breath of creation, the sign or seal that connects to the or the light of the fullness of the creator, the perfection of what was created from the Bereshit, the beginning, the universal eternal instructions that is the Messiah. The Messiah is the Torah. And the Torah is the Messiah, and it is our it is the seal, it is that which tethers us, or ties us to, or stakes us to the Father. No one gets to the Father but through who the Torah, the Word, Yahushua Mashiach, the Messiah. So again, 
when we say Torah, we're saying standing on, behold the breath of creation. That is the sign and the seal that connects to the or the light, the fullness of the creator and the perfection of what was created from the beginning, the Bereshit, the universal eternal instructions, the direction that is the Messiah. Hallelujah. I don't know if you guys see how wonderful this is, but Torah it means so much more. And I'm not getting into everything. I'll get into some of the uh, wonderful word Torah, where you find it, and the first two books, where you find it, and the last two, and how you won't find it in Waikra or Leviticus. But that's for the next one, guys. All right. So when we see this in the Hebrew, and again, I didn't even break it all the way down. That's kind of a simplistic view. But as always, be a Berean, a Borean, and search this out for yourself. Go into the Hebrew, study the Hebrew. Don't just use concordances, but go deeper. Look for the hidden spiritual meanings of these things. Look for them because they're only going to enlighten your eyes and they're only going to make you better. You'll get a fuller understanding of scripture. So next time you see the word law, you look for it and you know direction. It's instructions. It's the light. It is the ore of the Father, the light of the Father that is the Mashiach. So that is his anointed. All of this points to the Messiah, which points you back to the Father. Without the Torah, you cannot know the Father because you do not have the Messiah. It is not law. It is instructions. You can call them laws, but our understanding of law is a negative thing that has punishment if you break it. His has that too. But his is for your life and your benefit. Ours are arbitrary many times. So let's turn back to the ancient path, the Torah, our first love, the Messiah, the light, the fullness of all creation. Hallelujah. I hope you got something out of this. Again, like, subscribe, and share. And uh, don't follow any man. Always look to Scripture. Your foundation is the bedrock. It is the cornerstone. It is the root. It is the Messiah, the Torah. We love you, and we hope to see you again. And again, hallelujah. Praise the Most High. And praise the one who comes in the name of Yahuwah. Thank you. I'll see you again.